from SF Land, this is Dorking Out, a podcast for people who love to dork out about movies, TV, and everything pop culture. Welcome to Dorking Out. My name is Sonia Mansfield, and the last time I trusted you, Margot, I ended up with a son. Joining me is my <laughs> podcasting sister from another mister and the co-host of Dorking Out, Margot D. Hello. Hey, don't mind me. I'm just doing the Roger Rabbit. <laughs> I really wish I could do that. I cannot. Um, in this episode, we are dorking out about 1989's Do the Right Thing, which is celebrating its 30-year anniversary. I feel old. Um, oh, my God. The day the episode this episode comes out. So June 30th. Uh, is the 30-year anniversary, um, and it's getting a short re-release in theaters too. So, if you listen to this and you're like, "I need to re," I want to see that again, or I need to see it for the first time, it is playing in theaters. And of course, that's how Margot and I timed it because we are timely AF. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally not a coincidence that it's. <laughs> um. This movie's written, produced, and directed, and co-starring Spike Lee. It was like his follow-up to uh, She's All That. No, sorry, She's All That. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just nodding like, sure. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, you know, Spike Lee made that movie with Freddie Prince Jr. <laughs> yeah, everyone. <laughs> She's got to have it. Oh, my God, you guys. It is happy hour, and I'm having a beer, but I've only had, like, two sips. So, <laughs> this was his follow-up to She's Gotta Have It and School Days. I was um, just going to say School Days, yeah. Yeah, and this movie stars a lot of people, and I don't know if I should list them all because that's a lot of people, but I'll do a couple. Danny Aiello, uh, Ozzy Davis, Ruby D, Giancarlo Esposito, John Turturro, my favorite, Rosie Perez, and Samuel L. Jackson. Did you see this movie in the theater, Margot? Oh, absolutely. And it was a big, big deal. And it was gorgeous to see it on screen. And I remember just like the first, you know, it starts with Rosie Perez dancing. It's and I remember best. it was just like the whole theater, people were looking at each other like, holy shit, what's going to happen now? And it was just, I really loved it. My theater actually broke out into applause when that ended. Oh. Like they were, cause I was, I think I saw it like op probably opening weekend with a friend of mine. And I just remember the theater clapping when it was done. And she is Rosie. It opens with Rosie Perez dancing to fight the power by public enemy. And she just fucking slays it. Right. Like she's it, 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 amazing. Oh. She's so sexy and, and, and fearsome. Yeah. And just, She's so, and apparently they filmed her for eight hours. Like she threw out How her back she, and her knee. How did she do miserable it? by the end. Yeah. How did she? She's Superwoman. She is Superwoman. And I went down a whole rabbit hole after watching this movie <laughs> where watching Rosie, she used to be like a soul train dancer. So there's yep. this really great like compilation of Rosie Perez dancing on soul train. And then I just kept on going. It was like Rosie Perez used to. Um, she did choreography for the Fly Girls on In Living Color. And I just, I guess I had forgotten how much of a badass Rosie Perez is. So welcome to our Rosie Perez podcast. <laughs> 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 Where I'm just going to talk about how much I love Rosie Perez. She's great in this movie. She really is. And this, this movie's really great. And it's unfortunately very sad that the topics of like racism police brutality gentrification it's all like right. still super relevant they even talk about climate change in this movie i was shocked when that happened i know i because it's yeah. such a little aside like it's not like a major part of the movie but they talked about it and i was like holy shit yeah <laughs> Well, it's like a greek chorus uh, it's one hot day in brooklyn it's the hottest day of the summer and I live on the East Coast, you live on the West Coast, and I live in Brooklyn. I don't live in Bed-Stuy, but I'm like a couple miles away from mm -hmm. there. And when it gets really, really hot on a day like that, like everybody walks slowly, <laughs> yeah. moves slowly. You're always carrying water. 
you know, people have just a towel wrapped around their neck because they're just sweating all the time. And you just feel it with this movie, how hot it is and how humid it is. And they have these three gentlemen and it's Frankie Faison, Robin Harris, and is that Paul Benjamin? It's the, and the other guy. And I think, they I think that's right. I think that's right. They improvised all their lines, by the way. Robin and, Harris makes me oh, laugh every oh, time he's on screen. If Mike Tyson even dreams of kicking my ass, you better wake up and apologize. <laughs> he died a year later. So crazy. He was also yeah. he was also the dad in House Party. Yeah. Uh, Robin Harris was funny as shit. Funny as shit. He died at 36 from a heart That's attack. Crazy. Which is a crime. It is a crime. And he's so funny in this. They are like yeah. a little Greek chorus just sitting there and they say, I think in the movie it gets over a hundred and everybody is just on their last nerve because they're so hot. And then tensions kind of start bubbling up because of that. By the way, when it hits 80 here in San Francisco, everyone loses their mind. <laughs> they don't know what to do with it. And no. I think right now it's like a hundred in Europe. I believe Paris is really hot right now. And it's just places that aren't built for that kind of climate. Yeah. You know? And I remember being in Europe in the summer when it, they had heat waves and it's just like, there's no air conditioning anywhere. Nope. And, and you just kind of like find a shady spot on the street and walk that way. <laughs> like you avoid sidewalks that are like look hot. Sorry, uh, I couldn't uh, go into work. There was no shade. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my God. In New York, it's like you're sweaty on the subway platform and then the train shows up. And then they're blasting the AC. So then you're sweating and then you feel a little better because the AC's on. And then you get out again, then it's super hot. Uh. Then you go to your office and it's super cold. And so everybody gets summer colds or they're, everyone's just, you're constantly carrying sweaters yeah. and crap with you because it's just constantly changing. Uh, it sounds awesome. I am not <sighs> built. I am not built for that. Um, I was going to say how much I loved rewatching this movie. I had not rewatched it in a really long time, um, but I watched it a lot when it came out on video back in the mm -hmm. day because I just really liked this movie. And I love all the converse. I don't necessarily enjoy like all the heavy shit that's in the movie, although because enjoy is not the right word. Um, right. It's there's some serious shit in this movie and it's really hard to watch sometimes, but I so enjoy the like conversations and the side stories and just the little things that happen, like the guy who's riding his bike and he scuffs up bugging <laughs> out <laughs> brand new Air Jordans. He's like, Your Air Jordans are fucked up and, you know, and like and how he like yells at him about like, Who told you to live in my neighborhood and walk on my side of the street and just all of these random stories that are going on. I like, I like them. I like those stories. I like the names. Like uh, <laughs> bug it <Naya>. out, <laughs> bug it out. Mother, sister, <laughs> Mookie. I, I love radio Rahim. Yeah. I, every time he shows up, I think it's just incredible. And then I'm, of course I'm blanking on the name of the movie that, that Robert Mitchum movie. Oh, that, uh, that the night of the hate. hunter. Thank you. It's one of my favorite movies too. It's so when it's they do so that whole love hate scene, it's incredible. Yeah, it's so I love that movie. I love it. And 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 people used to walk around with huge uh, tape decks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in uh, that that was a thing. Yeah, like people and, carried them around. Oh, so yeah, noisy. And let me just say, they were never listening to NPR. It was always. <laughs> It was always something else. It was always uh, like crazy heavy metal music or rap music for sure. But that was the thing. My, my sister and I, when we would get bored, we lived in California. We had a long drive. Every once in a while, if we go through a quiet neighborhood, we would blare something like John Denver. You know? <laughs> Just like the opposite of Jim Croce. Like the opposite of like a blaring out song. Just to annoy people. Actually, <laughs> after we're done recording this, I'm going to get out my boom box and walk around downtown San Francisco with NPR <laughs> on. It's all things considered. Yay! Terry Gross. <laughs> what? <laughs> I would love to do that. Um, there's, there's so many good people in this movie and I had forgotten. So 
I John Turturro is so good at playing such a prick. He's, <laughs> he's a he, you know he lives in my neighborhood. I'm, and I bet he's a really nice man, and he's definitely he's so nice. And he's definitely done movies where he plays a nice man, but he's also really good at playing a fucking creep or a prick. Oh, and, and yeah, he well, there's two brothers. There's Pino and Vito, <laughs> and they're the sons of Danny Aiello's Sal. Yes, and so it's an African American neighborhood mostly, but there's like a, a Puerto Rican section. And then there's they're the Italian Americans. They have their pizzeria. And then there's across the street. It's a Korean grocer. Yes. And they just started there. And it's so there's all this attention and uh, bugging out. Who's Giancarlo Esposito? <laughs> and I, he's so good in this movie. I remember I just loved him in this movie, and I've I've loved his career. He's yeah. so intelligent and so interesting. His I think his brother was an opera singer. He's a half oh, Italian. Really? That's and so, half black, yeah. I think most people will probably remember him as um, he was in Breaking Bad. Yeah, the death scene in yes. Breaking Bad. Yes, but yeah. I also, um, I just remember it was around this time, like not too long after this, he did like Bob Roberts and um, yep. he was on Homicide, Life on the Street, things like that. So he's just one of those people that whenever he shows up, you're like, oh, good, it's that guy. Because he's always Yeah, really it's going to be good. He's going to be good. Yes. If nobody else. Yeah. And he's so bugging out one day, sitting in the pizzeria, and he notices that the wall is filled with Italian Americans, like Frank Sinatra and Sylvester Stallone. And he says to Sal, "How come there aren't any pictures of African Americans?" And he says, "Because it's an Italian American restaurant." He goes, "Yeah, but this place is filled with African American. You know, why don't you have any black people?" And Sal would just say, "Like, look, it's an Italian restaurant. Shut up. I pay the rent. Yeah. Leave me alone." But but bugging out has a bug up his ass about it. <laughs> I, mean, I guess that's why he got the name. <laughs> got the hence the name Bug It Out. And Bug It Out decides, you know what? I'm gonna make a thing out of this and I'm gonna get people to rally with me and we're gonna boycott you. Yeah. And there's like I love the scene where he's gonna boycott <laughs> tell Sal to boycott your nut meatball eating ass. <laughs> <laughs> and then Danny Hill just does that whole like up your ass thing, like get out of here, get out. Of here. Like it's so old school Brooklyn. Like I don't see that anymore, and I really got wistful for it. <laughs> I love it when he goes up to the the three older men and he's like, "We're gonna boycott Sal's Pizzeria," and he's like, "You should be boycotting the guy who fucked up your hair." <laughs> and they're like, "Hell no." <laughs> I think I do think it's funny how pretty much everyone in the neighborhood is like, hell no, I love eating Sal's pizza. Like no one's going to join him. And I think that whole thing is interesting because he is, so he's calling for a boycott because there's no African-Americans on the wall of fame. But then I'm like, I don't know. It's Sal's place. It is an yeah, Italian restaurant. Yeah, it's a theme. I mean, you go to a restaurant, they have the theme to the restaurant there. Like, that's what makes total sense. It's just, it's a hot day. Yeah. Bugging out needs to get a job or a girlfriend <laughs> or something because he's I acting out. I understand where he's coming from as well, but sure. it's, it's not worth protesting. Come on. No. That's crazy. Um, And I do think Sal is a really interesting character because I think in a lesser movie, he would have been like, fully racist like he would have gone full racist like kind of right. like a pino um it, but he isn't like he seems to really like he's fine with like kind of how things are in the neighborhood and he's nice to everybody and well not nice but tolerant i guess no, you know he's, like he's like nice he helped, to the de mayor yeah he's, he's nice the mayor, to the like, mayor and like um his sister Joa Lee when when she shows up yeah like uh, and he makes a slice of pizza for her special yeah like he seems like he's comfortable in the neighborhood and he likes it there but then you know around the end when Radio Rahim comes in he does like blurt out all this racist shit and you're like mm -hmm. fuck you know so yeah. and that's the thing like not everybody is a hundred percent one thing and so like part of me is like I feel bad for him the way things go but then the other part is well he blurted out all this racist shit that means it's kind of in his heart to say it right but, you know right yeah so it's I yeah. just there's and that's one of the things that's so awesome about the movie is there's these 
different things to think about. It's not, not everybody is 100% one thing. No, and no, they're, they're not. I mean, and, and Vito seems like he's a little more cool and down with the neighborhood. Yeah. And Mookie, they pay to deliver pizzas. And Mookie's got the easiest job in the world. I'm no sorry. shit. He's like walking up and down like one block. <laughs> <laughs> one pizza at a time. Yeah. You know, talks to his friends, goes back. He gets like 250 a week for that. But he has a girlfriend. That's Rosie Perez. And they have a son together, Hector. Yeah. And she's always complaining. You know, she has a mother that yells at her. And she wants Mookie to get a job and get a life. And she's not wrong. Yeah. But she's also hot and pissed off. And yes. And I exhausted, do, probably. I do love, um, I do think their relationship is really funny. And, like, their chemistry is really funny. Because Spike Lee is a, he's just kind of a kook to watch. He's not mm -hmm. a hand, like, you know, a typical Hollywood handsome actor. He's a character you know, he looks like a character and like Rosie Perez is smoking hot, but like she's also not like your typical Hollywood starlet. Mm -hmm. And I think the two of them together just kind of have this funny chemistry. And I like how he's always complaining about her cursing. <laughs> like, and, and she's like, get the fuck out of here. Or I don't fucking curse all the time. And I'm like, girl, I live that. That's me and my <laughs> husband all the time. <laughs> my husband is always like, you know, maybe you shouldn't be swearing in front of the kid. And I'm like, I don't always fucking swear. No, I just did it again. <laughs> I live it. I I think they, like, I know that there was some weird things about the filming because she kind of signed on and then agreed to do a nude scene and then kind of regretted doing that. Um, But I thought that they had, like, a really fun, like, playful banter mm -hmm. Um, that is fun to watch. Uh, yeah, I think she said she was crying. That, yeah. you know, she was really, it, she, but then later on she did nude scenes and she said she was totally fine, but yeah. she felt a little exploited it in was the her, moment. Yeah. And it was her first movie. Like, you yeah. know, apparently Spike Lee like saw her dancing at a club and was like, that chick fucking is awesome and cast yeah. her in his movie and he is not wrong. She's awesome. So, right. um, and yeah, she said like she was super uncomfortable. Um, she felt like was she being exploited and then she was worried about what if what what's going to happen when her family sees the movie and things like that but then like you said years later she's doing nude scenes and she's worked with Spike Lee several times since then so yeah you know it it clearly wasn't a deal breaker which reminds me so i was going to ask you do you think Mookie and Tina are still together oh god no <laughs> <laughs> no no, 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 no. I think Tina actually finds somebody. Yeah. And I think and I think she settles down because she needs that. And she needs somebody who's got something going on, like a city job or something like right. that. Like, yes, yeah, she's got to, she needs a man with a plan. And Mookie doesn't have a plan. Sure. So I saw in uh, my various readings that in the second season of She's Gotta Have It on Netflix, the show based on the first movie. Um, we find out that Rosie Perez's character is the mother of one of the characters in that show. And that Mookie... Oh, my God! And that Mookie is the father. And I'm so like... So it's not Hector? Or is it somebody else? I don't think it's Hector because the character's name is Mars Blockman. Mars Blackman? Yeah. That's what he used to be when he did those commercials yeah. with um, it's the, the character basketball player. From God the damn it. It's... Uh, like the Nike commercials with the, didn't he do them with like Michael Jordan? Michael Jordan, yeah. yeah. Mars Blackman here with yeah. Michael Jordan. Yes, they so were they, funny. They made this She's Gotta Have It TV series and recast everybody and set it in like modern time and stuff like that. So Anthony Ramos is playing Mars Blackman and then we found out that apparently Tina and Mookie are his parents. But I don't know if we actually see Mookie at all. Like I did see that like Rosie Perez shows up to play Tina, but I don't know anything. Oh, about interesting. Mookie. And now I'm like, well, now I just want to watch that episode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To, give me the scoop to find out what happens. And then I also read, look, I'm just going down the rabbit hole. I told you guys <laughs> I went down the rabbit hole on this one that there's a movie that Spike Lee did called Red Hook Summer and that Mookie is in it delivering pizzas. 
oh my god and that lee spike lee was out doing interviews and he said that uh sal took the insurance money from his burned pizzeria and reopened the restaurant in red hook and then he rehired mookie and they they put black celebrities on his wall of fame <laughs> Oh my, oh God, I got to see this now. But I don't know if, I'm like, is all of that in Red Hook Summer or is this just Lee like f telling that story in interviews? Like, I don't know. But now I'm like, I got to go back and I got to find Red Hook Summer. Yeah, totally. Like I said, I'm not, I totally dorked out, you guys. I went down all <laughs> kinds of, I, I can't help myself. <laughs> we should talk about the fact that racism is brought up constantly and it's not just white on black racism, mm -hmm. but it's 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 also it's it's black on Korean racism. It's it's tension between the Latino people and the black people. There's the tension between the uh, the cops mm -hmm. and the people they're supposed to be looking out for. Yeah. And there's an incredible scene where one character after another just says the most hateful things you could say uh, about different groups of people. And it's devastating to hear, but yeah. people talk like that. You know, some people still do. They do. And there's also a really great scene where Mookie and Pino have this conversation about how Pino is racist, but yet all of his favorite celebrities and athletes are African-Americans. And it's like, how can you drop the N-bomb? <laughs> all the time when all your favorites are African-Americans. And he's like, well, that's just, it's different. It's different. Right. You know, Michael Jordan's different. Totally. And here's the thing. That's the shit that fucking racists say. It's, it is like, I have heard this from like, you know, family members in my life. Like they, they're huge racists, they're assholes. And then, but they super love Barry Bonds on the San Francisco Giants or something. And I'm like, what? There's like a disconnect here. But it's a thing that people really, they really feel that way and they think that way. And it doesn't make sense to me, but it's true. They think that did way. I tell you, did I tell you the story when I was a kid? Um, my friend Penny came over and we were, uh, she was black. And my grandma was visiting with my mom. And Penny and I were hanging out during our homework together, and then we were getting ready to leave, and Mom was going to drive Penny home. And my grandmother went over to Penny, and she touched her face, and she says, I just want you to know, I think you are a credit to your race. Oh, and, my God. And, um, and I went, wow, Mom, what does that mean? I went into the kitchen, and then my mom came in like, sorry, Penny, I'll take you right now. Okay, honey, let's go, let's go, let's go. And Penny was very gracious about it, and Mom explained it to her mother and everything. And mom had to take me aside. She goes, your, your grandmother thinks that's a compliment. It's not. Don't ever say anything like right. that. Right. Yeah. And, which is like, okay, but it's confusing when you're a kid. Like, well, what's wrong with that? And then, of course, yeah. now I know. But, it, yeah, but I, I'll never forget it because my mom, like, hopping into the you know, dining room from the kitchen, like, <laughs> I'll take it out, Patty. Let's go. <laughs> it's like in slow motion. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> and to my grandmother, that was a huge compliment, right. by the way. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's like the, you know, you're so well-spoken. Yes, yes. You know, like it's Barack like, Obama. <laughs> oh, geez. Like, it's just, yeah. I mean, there's that kind of weird racism mm -hmm. that we all deal with in our life. And, you know, like I said, I've been surrounded with it. Like, my fam a lot of people in my family are huge assholes let me just say <laughs> yeah and there's and there's people like that in this movie and like you said there's racism coming from all sides it's you know and uh i don't it's just frustrating that so much hasn't changed and right even like the stuff with the police and there's a there's a lot of reminders throughout the movie of people who died in police custody like their names are on wall like the people's names are on walls or they reference them or you mm -hmm. know things like that and and then there's just like the sh like the thing with like sal's pizzeria was on fire and the firemen are there putting out the fire but then they turn the hose on the people right it's like somehow like black people are like more of a threat than a fire or something it's right it's fucking crazy Right. It's crazy. This movie is just 
it other than the fact that they use like a payphone, <laughs> like this movie is still <laughs> really timely. It's not the feel good hit of the summer. No, uh, no, it's, it it's, wasn't. It's it's a bit of a bummer. I mean, because you know, and Spike Lee is like, look, I don't know what the answers are either. I'm right. just, you know, want to put this out there. I want people to understand like how complex the world is, and that you know the way, especially Bed Stuy, you know, in ghettos are featured in movies and in TV, and he's trying to say like, no, people live here. It's an, e you know, it's, it's a whole neighborhood of good law abiding people. It just happened. Some of them happen to be poor. That's all. Right. And what do they put up with? And it's like, it's tough in a city like New York. Cause we're, you know, New Yorkers love to be like, Oh my God, we're so awesome and accepting and immigrants. Yay. But there's pockets of really bad racism mm -hmm. all over the city. It's the all same over Brooklyn and Queens. Yeah. It's the same in San Francisco. There's a movie. Yeah. There's a movie playing right now in theaters called the last black man in San Francisco. And it is, you know, pretty representative of a lot of the things that are going on here with there. There is definite racism in this town. And this is supposed to be San Francisco. Like you could come right. here when you're like the whole idea was that people who didn't fit in wherever they lived came to San Francisco. And it's not like that anymore. No. It's um, it doesn't feel as welcoming or as empathetic as it should right and it's it's a bummer and that the movie the last black man in san francisco um represents a lot of that um i was going to mention it and what i'm dorking out but i did it already so there you go yeah <laughs> what do you think of spike lee as an actor um <laughs> <laughs> he, I, he doesn't have a lot of range like yeah um uh, I, I'm I'm very much watching Spike Lee when I'm watching a Spike yeah. Lee movie. Do you know he's kind of the same person every time, but I find him watchable at the same time. Yeah, if that means anything. Yeah, like he's entertaining. He's super entertaining. He's got those big eyes. Yeah, he's super funny. I love the stuff um, with his, him and his sister. I think the stuff. With, oh yeah, because they're fighting, but then they start like cracking up, and I don't. Yeah. It feels very natural. Yeah, no, his stuff with his sister is really good. And um, his father did the music. And the music is kind of all over the place. It, it's like jazz sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then it's very orchestral. And then they throw in some hip hop. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you hear Radio Wahim. You hear Fight the Power yeah. throughout the movie the whole time. And then we forgot Samuel L. Jackson <laughs> as the radio DJ, who's hilarious. So, was it Mr. Senior Love Daddy? <laughs> yes yes <laughs> at one point he said yo yo we gotta chill the fuck out <laughs> just, i love so i weird. love that he's uh kind of like when we talked about gross point blank i love that his like radio studio is like right on the street with an open window yeah, <laughs> yeah. like that's not soundproof <laughs> <laughs> but in this case i get it yeah no it's very it's very appropriate is this your favorite Spike Lee movie? I think it is. Um, yeah, I'm going to say it is. Is this yours? For sure. It's it's definitely yeah. the one I've seen the most. Um, I would love to revisit Black Klansman. I really liked Black Klansman. Yeah, but I me haven't, too. I haven't brought myself to revisit, but I think this is the one I, I like a lot. And I really like his documentaries, too. Um Mm -hmm. but it's four hard little to, girls yeah four little girls and then he did one the one on hbo about Ka Hur hurricane katrina um when the levees broke that was brilliant that documentary yeah. and there was one woman in particular i can't remember her name but she was the one that like dared barbara bush to call her mm -hmm. you know because barbara bush said how like how great it was for them to stay <laughs> at the stadium just this is my number she gave her real number yeah she's like fuck you she's like assholes it, Rest it, in peace, but, you know. Yeah, it was, those were really good. It's hard to say those as favorites because it's not like, oh, I can't wait to watch Four Little Girls. Again. <laughs> like, oh, my God. <laughs> you know, but uh, he's, I mean, he's just amazingly talented for sure. And, oh, absolutely. But this is the one that I've definitely gone back to the most. And maybe, maybe it's because, unfortunately, like I said, it's rather 
it's still like timeless in that way. With it's hard to think like. about because, well, you know, for our, I think I can spill the beans, but for our next episode, well, uh, for one of our episodes coming up for What a Creep, I'm studying about OJ mm -hmm. and the Rodney King beatings were just a few years after this and everything like starts happening in LA. And then here we are now 30 years later with Black Lives Matter. Yeah, it's this, and it's the same. It's just the same, same shit. Same shit, and it's so frustrating. And that's yeah. why um, it, it was the same thing when I saw Black Klansmen. Like, there's so much in Black Klansmen where I'm like, well, that could be today. And it's yeah. set in the '70s, you know, and based on a true story. So it's <sighs> we're the worst, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was eight when I saw this movie the first time um, so I'm curious what did you think of the ending when you saw it the first time when, when, Mookie, everything... when, when Mookie throws the trash can through the window were you I like I was so upset at Mookie yeah. I was really upset with Mookie and then Mookie has the balls the size of church bells and shows up the next day to Sal and says hey you need to pay me right, right after his I can place it burned out. The older me gets it. Yeah. That's it, the, yeah. I'm I'm so glad I'm yeah. not alone in this because I remember no. I, when I Excuse saw me. it the first time, I I was with it and I and I understood like what happened is fucked up, but I couldn't wrap my head around why Mookie threw the trash can through the window. And keep in mind, I, at the time, 18 year old white girl, what the fuck do I know about anything? Right. So I was like, I right. don't understand that part. It doesn't make sense to me. And, you know, I thought he liked them. Why would he do that? You know, <laughs> just very simple minded right. explanation. Like I thought he liked Sal. That seems weird that he would do that, you know? And then, yeah, now you watch it now and you're like, Oh, I understand now what's happening here. And, but yeah, 18 year old Sonia didn't get it. It didn't distract me from thinking the movie was amazing. Um, yeah. But, but I was confused by that. For sure. And then, but as an older woman now, especially like the racism and sexism are sometimes two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. It's sort of, you know, being treated on the margins like you don't matter. Yeah. And white men are the, are the de facto person as Quinn yeah. Cummings says, and like everybody else is sort of on the margins. It's microaggressions upon microaggressions mm -hmm. over the years. And then one day you're just screaming at somebody on the subway or something. Yeah. Cause you're just like, I can't fucking take this for one more second. I can't be mansplained or anything. And I can see him just like in that moment, like I need to blow this shit up because yeah. everything it, it's, it's just, it's coming to a head and I don't care if I'm out of a job now. Like yeah. I, you know what I mean? And especially radio Rahim, Oh, I love Raider Rahim. I get so upset when he's killed. And yeah. He's, and it's because it's fucking yeah, terrible. You know? It's awful. Yeah. And, you know, once again, it's just, you know, it could happen and it has happened. Yeah. And, oh, it happens now. Yeah. It, it happens, happens like, on Facebook Live. Yeah. It's, so, it's happened. And, yeah. You know, you, you say it exactly right when you say, like, how racism and sexism are two sides of the same coin and how, like, when our awful, awful government um, confirms someone like Brett Kavanaugh, I'm like, right. I want to take a trash can and throw it through a window. I fucking get it. Absolutely. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Like, once again, your word doesn't matter versus him. He mm -hmm. needs to be protected. Yes. He needs to, you know, or all the bad men we've talked about on Wonder Creep, like, they still need to have projects. They still yes. need to have movies to direct and star in. Because God forbid they don't, right. uh, or or anybody criticizes them, you know. Yeah. Whereas a woman fails at something, and it's like she's branded for life. Yep. It's just, ugh. Uh, it's so infuriating. Yeah. Very, very much so. <laughs> uh, yep. Speaking of like racism, um, so this is obviously like one of the best movies of the year of 1989 um every critic you know put it on its top 10 on their top 10 um th it was like on their like top 10 movies of like the 80s you know all this stuff um do you remember what won best picture would it be driving miss daisy yes it would be driving miss daisy <laughs> and that okay that this movie, movie fucking was... infuriates me 
this movie wasn't even nominated for Best Picture. No, it was. De- I think it was for di- screenplay, not even director. Yeah. And, and uh, Danny Aiello was was nominated for Best Supporting Actor. Yeah. And I think if they got a nom for music and maybe cinematography, I'm sorry, I forgot to write them all down. I, l- but I, I looked shocked. it up. So because okay. I thought you would like this. So for it was nominated for Best Screenplay. <laughs> and it was nominated against Woody Allen's Crimes and Misdemeanors. That's a really say what you will about that's Woody a, Allen, and we will. That's a good movie. Uh, that's a really good movie. Uh, Do the Right Thing, Spike Lee, Sex, Lies, and Videotape, Steven Soderbergh. Yeah. When Harry okay. Met Sally, Nora Ephron. Yep. Yeah. But the winner was Tom Schulman for Dead Poets Society. <laughs> Oh my god, and we talked about that. <laughs> Which we've talked about this movie on our podcast and you can go back and listen to it. But um there's a lot of good things in Dead Poet Society. I don't think the screenplay is one of them. <laughs> no. 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 Like and I'd say of all of them, when Harry Met Sally is the one people quote. Yes. Yeah. That like, movie's an all timer. It's an all timer. Yeah. I'll fight anyone who says different. And then for supporting actor, Danny Aiello was nominated. So was Dan Aykroyd for Driving Miss Daisy. Uh, Marlon Brando for A Dry White Season. Nobody even knows what that is. I don't even know what that is. Uh, Martin Landau for Crimes and Misdemeanors. He's legit great in that movie. And then Denzel yeah. Washington won for Glory. So that's that's pretty good. Yeah, no, that's okay. I, I wouldn't be mad about losing to Denzel Washington Never. if I were Danny But Aiello. then, like, you know, best picture with Driving Miss Daisy. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, And we and we had this happen this year with yeah. the, the movie the that won uh, the Green Book. Beat it's the Black same Klansman. thing. <laughs> it's, like, it's exactly Black, the same thing. It's the same fucking thing. It's, a, it's over and over again. And I remember, yeah, I remember, like, seeing the commercials for Driving Miss Daisy. I'm like, that looks really white and stupid. And, and, and I was very white and young and stupid. Like I, I just was like, that just seems really pandering. And I don't know if I've said this before, but Margo, my friend Margo saw it in San Diego when it was in the theater. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was, it was a play. And there's a moment in the play where the woman says, you're my best friend to her driver. And it's actually a very sad moment because she realizes she's such a hateful but old meanie that yes. she literally doesn't have any friends except this one guy and she has to pay him to drive her around. And she says in the movie they made it they had the music swelling and it's like, oh they are best friends. And Margot said that she's almost threw a chair at the screen. <laughs> she was so upset. She picked up a trash can and she threw it. In a trash screen. can. <laughs> I would understand that. I'm I'm tired of these hackneyed endings. That one I understand. But yeah, I think Kim um Kim Basinger made a speech at the Oscars Mm -hmm. and she said that um, she was upset that one of the movies that should have been nominated for telling because it told the truth that nobody's willing to accept yet. I'm not giving her proper credit. I wish I could remember exactly what she said, but she had, but she looked terrified when she said it too. Oh, was that (laughs) that when she was dating Prince? Yes. She's, Oh yeah, I I think I remember that now. She was wearing like a dress that was like you know off the shoulder, what like had one sleeve or something. Anyway, it was she wore crazy outfits. She's like a beautiful woman who does not address herself. <laughs> 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 but bless her, but good for her for saying something. Yeah, a lot of people felt that way. We're not the. I mean, a lot of people that year were like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" Oh yeah, no. It's. I mean, drive here. Nominated was like Driving Miss Daisy, which is like not even the best. It's not even the best move. It, I wouldn't even put it in the top ten of the year, but here it is. It's no. one. Uh, Born on the Fourth of July. I'm like, sure, I could see why that's nominated. Dead Poets yeah. Society. Mm. Um, Field of Dreams. Field of Dreams is sure good. And then My Left Foot. Which is... Well, yeah, because you have a cripple, you know? <laughs> Smith used to call it, like, British white people problems, although I think he's Irish. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, UK problems. I don't know. It's, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's gone. It went to the time, like, if you had some sort of affliction, your character had some sort of affliction, mm-hmm. you automatically won an Oscar. Yeah. So they, they, there's a few movies like that. Yeah, the, like the King's Speech, you know. Or I am Sam. <laughs> that Sean Penn movie. We should do that movie. Oh my god! I have, oh, it's so bad. I'm like, I don't even know if I saw the whole thing. 
it's I don't, I don't know if I've seen the whole thing, but we could definitely do it sometime. Yeah. Uh, we are going off on a tangent. Do you, <laughs> do you think, is there an MVP for you in this movie? I think it's, it's kind of, uh, Danny Aiello, I think it's a tough job he's playing. Mm-hmm. I think Sal is a very complicated character. Like you said, I think he's at his core, he's a good person, but he has his prejudices. Yeah. But but I think um, I think Robin Harris is really hilarious. <laughs> yeah. And I think actually maybe Giancarlo Esposito at Bugging Out. I think he's pretty amazing. Yeah. I rewatching this was struck by how great Danny Aiello is in this movie. Yeah. I think he's really really great. Um, and you know this will be a surprise to no one. I was just totally blown away by Rosie Perez again. <laughs> like in yeah. this movie and I'm now I'm like we need to watch Fearless we should watch Fearless and do an episode on that we should do White Men Can't yeah, Jump totally. <laughs> I would love to do White Men Can't Jump because I have not seen that movie in years I think if we do that movie we need to bring in Adam Risky because I think it might be an Adam Risky favorite I, I Adam Adam if you you're listening you let us know if you need to come on and talk about White Men Can't Jump um, but I remember seeing Fearless and just I just loved Fearless and thought she was so great in it. But anyway, would you like to hear some of the other movies of 1989? A lot yes. of them are not as good as Do the Right Thing. Just saying. Um, this is the top 10. Number 10, Born on the Fourth of July. Kind of fascinating mm-hmm. to me that this was a top 10 movie. It's not like one that you go back and rewatch. <laughs> like, it was the Tom Cruise thing. I guess so. It's not like, hey, everybody, let's go out to dinner and we'll see Born on Fourth of July. Woo! And like, cry a lot. Yes. <laughs> it's going to be so fun. Uh, number nine was The Little Mermaid. Played at my, Oh, yes, of course. Played at my theater for like a year. Number eight, Ghostbusters 2. Ooh, no. No. Number seven, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. That's a good movie. I'm like, I haven't seen that one in a long time. Uh, number six, Lethal Weapon 2, starring oh, yes. um, some sexist, racist bigot and <laughs> Danny Glover. Uh, number five, <laughs> Dead Poet Society. Number four, Look Who's Talking. Oh, I like Look, Look Who's Talking. We should put I Look remember Who- loving that movie. We should put Look Who's Talking on the list, actually. We should. We should. I think there's a... I bet it holds up. I I think it's funnier than people give it credit for. Uh, number three, totally. Back to the Future 2. Number two yeah. was Batman. And, of course. Which I love. Um, yes. And number one was Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Oh, that's a good one, too. And I was like, yeah, I like that one, too. So those are the top what ten if- movies of 89. So I did some... Oops. I almost spilled my wine. Uh, <gasps> no, no. Okay, I did. So I did some research. So I've got the top ten. I've got top five pop hits, and mm-hmm. then the top five uh, or four. Sorry, there's four R and B hits. So, okay. So 1989 top five uh, pop poison. Every rose has its thorn. I got excited because for a second I thought you meant poison by Belle Biv DeVoe. I love Belle Bib DeVoe. Yeah, me too. Um, Every big, Rose, big I'm all the band poison? Not so much. <laughs> <laughs> Straight Up by Paul Abdul. That song's awesome. Miss You Much by Janet Jackson. That's a good song, too. Uh, Girl, You Know It's True by Millie Vanilli. <laughs> <laughs> it was and true. They, the- were, they were lip syncing. It's true. R&B, we have Shake Your Rump by the Beastie Boys. One of my all-time favorite songs. Same here. Uh, Bust a Move by Young MC. Another great one. Oh, my gosh. I love that song. Just a Friend by M- Biz Marquis. <laughs> That's Don't a good forget. one, too. <laughs> and Me, Myself, and I by De La Soul. <gasps> I love that song, Such too. Such a good These song. These are good lists. Yeah, this is good music. Uh, the Janet Jackson reference reminds me that Rosie Perez did choreography for Janet Jackson and I'm wondering what videos she did it for I wonder if it was for that like Rhythm Nation stuff or was it like nasty and what have you done for me lately and stuff like that because she did Janet Jackson Bobby Brown LL Cool J and In Living Color she was a choreographer for the Fly Girls 
And Paula Abdul did some uh, choreography too before she became a singer. Yeah. I wonder if Rosie Perez can sing. <laughs> She's got a very interesting oh, voice. <laughs> I got a story about Rosie Perez. I want to hear and, it. In Living Color. And pa she and Paula Abdul were both nominated for an Emmy for choreography. And I don't remember what Paula Abdul was nominated for. But she won over Rosie Perez. <laughs> and she went to Rosie Perez holding the award and says, oh, my God, this really should have gone to you. And Rosie just looked at her and said, I know. <laughs> Which I said, That's hilarious. You got to love her just for that. I love that, like, two women who were doing choreography could become stars in their own right outside of that. Yeah, I don't know if that's something that necessarily happens anymore. Does it? I can't it? think of anyone. I, I'm like, no. me neither. Oh, anyway. What else are you dorking out about, Margot? I've become a dork about Marvel movies out of nowhere. <laughs> and I don't know. It started with the Avengers Endgame. And I really, really loved it. And so I've been watching it on YouTube. You can find clips of it on YouTube. <laughs> so I saw Captain Marvel. As you suggested yeah. I do a few weeks ago. Loved it. Oh, I'm so glad. Absolutely loved it. And then over the weekend, I watched Captain America Civil War twice. Because <laughs> I got so into it. It's a, Is it still on Netflix? I really loved Captain America Civil War. I thought it was... I love all the Captain America movies. I think they're all really great. Captain America is far cooler than I gave him credit for. Mm -hmm. And the whole backstory with Tony Stark and his dad and his mother is so heartbreaking. Yeah. And I, I love the kid who's playing Spider-Man now because he's yeah. really a teenager. Yeah, Tom Holland. Marissa Tamai as Aunt Meg. Eh, yeah. It's a bit of a stretch for me. But yeah. you know what? She's 56 and she looks amazing. I know. She she looks as hot as she ever did, but I still, I got, I got, I've been totally into it now. So I've been making a point of going back and checking out the other ones again. And that's what I've been dorking out about is that the Marvel movies. I, it's so funny. You mentioned Tom Holland as Spider-Man. I've been singing his praises a lot to people when we're talking about the Marvel movies, because I love his interaction with the other heroes in Avengers Endgame. I love how, because he's young and the actor is young and like his interaction with like Captain Marvel in Endgame is really like funny. He's like, hi, I'm Peter Parker. And she's like, hello, Peter Parker. Like just their interaction together, right. like what he brings out of other people opposite him. I really, really like. And uh, I, I think it's hilarious that you are dorking out about Marvel movies when I've been watching Real Housewives of, of New York, which is your favorite thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's on tonight. Yes. So <laughs> the season finale. I went to visit a friend of mine and we were just hanging out one night and I was, I, I don't know what we were flipping around or whatever. And it was on. And so we watched an episode and then I just started watching it and I can't stop watching it. And I'm not as I'm not caught up, so I still have a few more to go. Um, cause I and I only started with the new season. I haven't like gone back to season one or something because I don't think it's the yeah. kind of show where I need to start from the beginning. <laughs> no, no, no. You don't need the origin story. No. You can just dive right in. And I'm, you know, to be honest, I'm one of those huge assholes that's always like, mm, I've never watched The Real Housewives. Like I'm somehow better than people, but it's ridiculous. Like it's something to watch and it's very entertaining and yeah it doesn't require like my undivided attention which is one of the things I like about it and you know you said something one time on your best neighbors podcast with your co-host Aaron where you said that people would like give you a hard time or something because you watch Real Housewives and that you know who everyone is and what their roles are on the show and things like that and that you said this is our sports how is this any different right. than people who are super into football or baseball? And ever since then, I've been like, she's right. And everyone else is wrong. And they're an asshole. And so yeah. I've kind of put Real Housewives on like a list on the back of my head, in the back of my head of something. I'm like, Margot super loves this. And I super love Margot. So I'm going Aww. to watch 
one of these and I finally did and now I get it and I'm totally going to keep watching. <laughs> <laughs> they had um, Beverly Hills was on last night and Camille Grammer was married to Kelsey Grammer. Right. And it's very famous. Like he dumped her during the show on her season and <laughs> Kelsey's awkward. worth and And Kelsey's kind of an asshole. We might have to cover him on Creeps yeah. one day. But his, so Camille's his ex-wife, she loses her house in the Malibu fires that happened last fall. And she and Denise Richards, uh, both, uh, Denise Richards just had a lot of soot damage, but she didn't have her home burned out, which they had to get rid of all their stuff. And Lisa Ren is another actress at the table and they're talking about the fires. And Denise says, well, I guess, aren't we fortunate enough that we can replenish these things, that we have a lifestyle that we can replenish these things. And then Camille, they call them to the camera. Camille is like, okay, Denise, I'm sorry. You not being able to stay in your rented house is not the same as me losing my house. And it was so snotty. And then and that Lisa Renner just says, Camille makes it hard for people to feel sorry for rich people. <laughs> and it's just like, it's a world I don't know yeah. that no one would ever say to me. And then I see it blatantly and I'm like, oh my God, that's fascinating. And it's just, it's, it's a bunch of women in their forties and fifties and sixties. Yeah. And they're just living out loud. They don't care. And there's something exhilarating about that. It's like golden girls, but with a lot of Botox <laughs> and spray tans. <laughs> Like, I could, I could see that super funny. Yeah. And I never thought I would say this, but you know, Denise Richards is right. (laughs) Yeah. Denise Richards is totally, you find out Denise Richards is actually a very sweet person, like a very normal down to earth person. And that, you know, this, and Kelsey Grammer's ex-wife is a monster and just, but it's just like, it's just, like I said, like you never have shows for women about real women. It's you true. Know, I don't care that's, what 20 something women think. Yeah. Well, that's why people, you know, back when you were in your 20s or 30s, that's why you were excited about like that show on um, it was called Living Single with like Queen yeah. Latifah. Like that's why everyone loved that show. That's why we love the Golden Girls. That's why we love Sex in the City. That's why yeah. people loved Girls on HBO. Like it's just a show about women that's not always necessarily about the men in their lives or who they're dating all the sex in the city is pretty guilty of that but not always yeah, but, it's not, but not always and i wasn't about their kids or their parents right so much like the family shit like yeah. it was just about them and i just find that really interesting like it just and it's like i said you could pour, i can have a glass of wine and watch this and keep up game of thrones i can't touch <laughs> anything i gotta stare the whole time like Game glued of Thrones. to the set, and I still don't know. I I watched every single episode of Game of Thrones, and I still can't remember everyone's names. Like <laughs> okay, because I can't. I'm always like, you know, the guy with the mustache, and then there's the guy yeah. with the eye patch, and uh, you know, I remember actually, I do remember all the women's names. <laughs> well, yeah, the women were interested, but I mean, when people may make fun of me for that, but they're really into Game of Thrones yeah. or or Marvel or whatever, I'm just like. It's all the same. It is all the same. It's just it's it's a universe that you enjoy that you take pleasure in. Like it, it doesn't make me in t- less intelligent than you or no. anything. No, yeah. it's about like, and that's what the show was about. Like originally, the idea of dorking out. Like we all dork right. out about like different things, and that could be Real Housewives. It could be sports. It could be math. I don't give a fuck. Like we all like care. we all have our thing. And I just was pleasantly surprised by how much I liked it. And I, you know, the episode was over and my friend was like, my friend Kate was like, should I watch, should we watch the next one? I'm like, yeah, yeah, we should. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I think we watched like five in a row. Like I was like, yeah, let's watch the next one. Then what happens? Let's watch the next one. Like. I was into it. Like to get into below deck. Oh my God. Oh. They're great at that. Cause you, you got to find out what happens. Cause everything's a two part episode. Yeah. Oh, it's great. I, I will have to put it on the list. One thing at a time, Margo. <laughs> baby steps. One thing, yeah. yeah t- <laughs> baby steps, but welcome to the world there. <laughs> Thank you. Where can people. But I thought I could. Oh, go up. ahead. Oh, sorry. I was, I was just going to say like, I didn't think I would like Marvel's like Captain America. I'm like, it's three hours. I'm not going to keep up. I'm not going to remember who anybody is, whatever. 
I totally was fine. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's totally intuitive. Like, and it's just super great acting and really interesting people. And you don't know, and the stakes are really high. And I, I was like, Oh, I get it. This is why people are into it. Yeah. Have you watched the guardians of the galaxy movies yet? I saw the first one. I haven't seen the second one, but I love the first one. The first one is my favorite of all the Marvel. It's hilarious. Movies. It's my favorite. I just, I love those characters so much. When they show up in any of the other Marvel movies, I'm like, that's the best part. Yeah. <laughs> I refuse to hear anything <laughs> different. Everyone's like, well, actually, the part with Tony Stark. No. No. The best part's the part <laughs> nope. with the Guardians. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Where can people find you on the internet, Margot? On social media, especially Twitter and Instagram, it's Brooklyn Fitchick. And my blog is brooklynfitchick.com. And... I was going to say, you can also listen to, if you like listening to us, you can listen to us at What a Creep as well, where we talk about yep, creeps every on. week, and then we end it with and, someone who's not a creep. And we're catching on, Sonia. People are really checking yeah. it out. So that thank you guys so much for checking us out. And yes, we find a creep, we talk about a creep, but we always end it with somebody who's really cool and not a creep. So there you go. Absolutely. And you can find Dorking Out wherever you listen to your podcasts. And if you listen to us on Apple Podcasts, give us a review. We still have a lot. We have a couple of good new reviews, which is awesome. Thank you for doing that. But most of our reviews are from when Smith was on the show. So if you guys like Margot, and I know you do, because everyone does, give us some, mm -hmm. give us some stars. Um, and you can find us at dorkingout.com. And you can find us on Twitter at dorking out show and we're also on facebook at dorking out show and you can find me at the sonia show and that's sonia with an i on twitter mainly uh also instagram if you like pictures of pink hair um kids uh soup <laughs> <laughs> then follow me on and beer follow me on instagram <laughs> i'm just gonna say if you like pictures of cats follow me on instagram i do like pictures of cats Everyone, my cats are the cutest in Brooklyn. You gotta check it out. They Brooklyn really are. Check. They really are. Um, this was super fun as always. Thank you, Margot. Absolutely. And, and fight that, the power. And that's the double truth, Ruth. <laughs>